In this lesson, we're going to talk about transformations on the rational parent function y equals 1 over x. They can also be written in function notation as f of x equals 1 over x. We recognize the parent function of a rational as being written as a fraction with an x in the denominator. And we can recognize this graph because it's a rather unique graph, as you can see from what's drawn here. Uh, the graph that's drawn in green right here does represent the parent function. And you will notice a few key things about it. First of all, as you move from the left to the right, you'll notice that it comes from a position very close to the x-axis, although it never touches. Now, if we were to go further to the left, we would discover it would just get closer and closer and closer to x, but never quite reach there. It approaches, but never reaches. As it comes to the right, the first key point we see is right here at negative 1, negative 1. At this point, negative 1, negative 1, uh, it actually turns and goes downwards and begins to approach the y-axis, but again, never quite reaches the y-axis. Our function is actually undefined at x equals 0 because we can't do division by 0. Uh, That's why you don't see a value there. And then it begins again from infinitely close to the y-axis uh, at the top, moving downward and to the right. And again, we see another key point at point 1, 1, where again it turns and begins to approach the x-axis, where again it never quite reaches but approaches infinitely close. In this case, we would actually call the x and the y axis our horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Horizontal and vertical asymptotes are places on the graph that the graph approaches but never reaches. Uh, these uh, places will get infinitely close, and these graphs rather will get infinitely close to the asymptote, but it never actually touches the asymptote. Now we can't draw it like that. Uh, many times in a drawing we will actually end up looking like we touch because we just can't get our lines thin enough to uh, show the difference. And especially if you use a graphing calculator, it may appear to disappear on the x or y graph, uh, but it doesn't really. It just can't uh, get a resolution high enough to tell the difference. Okay, so let's begin by looking at how you can do some simple transformations of the uh, function f of x equals 1 over x. I'm going to get rid of that and leave my parent function graph up there. I'm going to write an equation that I want to transform at this time. And that equation is going to be y equals 1 over x minus 2. Okay, when we see a minus 2 written out to the right like this, we have to think minus 2 is not in the denominator of the fraction. So we have to consider this outside of the parent function. Any plus or minus that's written out there will have the effect of moving the graph up and down. Plus moves it up, minus moves it down. So in this case with minus 2, it's going to move this whole graph down. One of the interesting things that it will do is it will create a new horizontal asymptote at negative 2. Remember an asymptote is a line that it approaches but never reaches. And this is our new reference line instead of the x-axis. It's a way that we can draw this graph. So now I'm going to sketch my graph. Again, it comes from up here, crosses like that, and goes off to infinity that direction, getting closer and closer to our asymptote, but never actually touching. Same thing happens on the negative side. Notice it's going along our asymptote, and then as it approaches, it turns downward and heads off to negative infinity without ever actually touching the y-axis either. And our new reference point, or our new reference line rather, is our horizontal asymptote uh, that we can see at y equals negative 2. So this transformation moved our graph down 2. If it had been plus 2, it would have moved our graph and our horizontal asymptote uh, up to 2. Let me go ahead and get rid of this again. And I'm going to now draw another, make another transformation here. I'm going to go y is equal to 1 over x plus 2 right here. Notice this time the x plus 2 is in the denominator of the fraction or inside the parent function. 
uh, whenever we have something in the denominator, that has the effect of a left and right move on the graph. And it may seem a little counter to what we're used to, but plus 2 will actually move it to the left, and minus 2 would move it to the right. Uh, so this is going to move to the left and also create a new vertical asymptote at negative 2, which is 2 to the left of our y-axis, which was formerly our asymptote. And so with that as a reference and also using our x-axis for our horizontal reference, we should be able to draw this new graph right along here, curving and again heading off to positive infinity along the x-axis, getting infinitely close but never actually reaching the x-axis. And then on the negative side, coming from negative infinity, approaching our vertical asymptote, and continuing off in a negative direction along the new vertical asymptote, uh, but never touching it. So we have done a transformation of y where it goes to the left this time by plus 2. Had that been x minus 2, our new vertical asymptote would have been at positive 2, and we would have moved our entire graph to the right by two positions. I'm going to do it one more time here. So now I'm going to write y equals 1 over x minus 1 minus 1. Now this is actually a multiple transformation. We're doing two things at one time. The minus 1 out to the right is going to move it down 1. The minus 1 underneath or in the denominator is going to have the effect of moving it to the right 1 and also creating new horizontal and vertical asymptotes this time. Now, so I'm going to draw those in. The minus 1 moves down 1 and creates a new horizontal asymptote at negative 1. Didn't draw that very well, but I think you can tell. And the x minus 1 underneath, or in the denominator, is going to move to the right 1. Remember, it's counter to what we're kind of used to. Negatives move right. And so it creates a new vertical asymptote at positive 1. And we use those as our references to be able to sketch our graph again, like this. Notice it's the same graph, same curve, uh, with the same steepness, and the same thing over here, except that they start in a different place. And something like that. So you get the idea here. We've moved it down. Well, my left one is just not a very good drawing. Let me do that one more time. It's a little better reference here, I guess. Now, we'll go with that. So the one on the left has been moved uh, down below our horizontal asymptote and to the left of our vertical asymptote that's at x equals 1. So this is a multiple transformation that has moved down and to the right uh, by 1 in each direction.